Welcome everyone to episode one of The Cipher, where we will be demonstrating how you, the viewer, have been missing important messages hidden within your favorite media. In today's video, we will be analyzing a series of four videos published by Nebula ASMR, Oopsie Daisy ASMR, Nymphy ASMR, and Amy K ASMR. In doing so, we hope to show you how important context is to the delivery of inaudible messages being hidden in plain sight. Let us begin with the following section from Nebula's video. It's a real thing and I have the holy grail right over here. But just give me a moment, all right? It's, it's, it's very special to me. Yeah, and um, I, only, I only share it with other, others like ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. In this clip, Nebula is preparing to show the viewer some secret files relating to UFO abductions. Did you notice what she said at the end? And, um, I, only, I only share it with other, others like ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. My name is Ryan. Now, you may be questioning my hearing at this point. Clearly, she said, I only share it with others like ourselves, right? Wrong. This message was engineered to be ambiguous, and that was intentional. Here's the evidence. So I brought something with me to share with the group. So, um, so I, ha I have what's considered the holy grail of information about aliens. Everything you ever need or wanted to know. Right. I have it all. Here we see a nose tap, which may indicate that the viewer and the artist know something, that they share some kind of secret. We will soon create a video montage of all of the different times and contexts in which we've seen this strange gesture appear in ASMR, but now is not that time. More importantly, what we see next is a brief stutter before Nebula says the word right. You have a need or wanted to know. I have it all. One more time. Whereas anyone else without context would write this off as some kind of camera artifact, I believe that the stutter was placed here intentionally. It was placed here to draw attention to the fact that the name Ryan would come up just seconds later, and it would be mistaken by most people for the word right. To me, this is too coincidental to be a mistake, especially given the other examples of this phenomenon I will show you now. Um, do you have any weird habits related to sleep? Let me give you some examples of myself, for example. I change my bed sheets every four days. <laughs> I can't, cannot sleep in bed sheets that are beyond that, beyond four days, or I just cannot get into bed, I can't fall asleep either. It's just a strong aversion. I need to put lotion on my body, my feet. I cannot have dry skin, and I cannot have my skin touching fabric, especially if it's without lotion. <laughs> um, can't eat in bed, never, never. <laughs> makes me feel quite gross. Um, I prefer to eat at a table, coffee table, kitchen, but never in bed. If I feel a crumb against my skin in bed, I can't, I cannot get in, like, under the bed covers. And, um, if I have to run out of bed for something, I always have to have slippers on so that I don't feel like a crumb or I don't know, or a particle of something on my foot and then bring that into the bed, you know, so always <laughs> slippers, always um, and showers at night, always <laughs> can't fall asleep or get into bed without a shower <laughs> so that's what I meant, you know yeah 
Yeah, no, it's crazy. Bizarre, right? It's crazy. Did you catch that? I'll play it one more time. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Bizarre, right? It's crazy. It would be easy to mistake these embarrassing sleep habits as some kind of personal admission from Nymphy, given her use of first-person language here. However, the final line changes everything, doesn't it? I argued in episode zero that Chris Marno and I are two parts of a bizarre A-B test, where he will be humiliated on the world stage. The inclusion of his name tied to embarrassing sleep habits here seems to bolster that notion. Further, the fact that they are being discussed at all is quite telling. Both Goodnight Moon and Marno ASMR are often sponsored by Helix Mattress. It's become quite conspicuous, really. It almost seems as if they are sponsored more than would actually be beneficial to the company. But it makes total sense when you consider that nearly every one of Goodnight Moon's Helix-sponsored videos have some kind of personal message within, directed at me. Clearly, their sponsors are giving them encoded messages to send. Hell, it was a Helix ad that broke their fake relationship to the world in the first place. This was made all the more apparent in a video from Angelica ASMR, who I pegged as my FBI contact from earlier this year. For reasons unknown to me, she removed that video from YouTube, but not before I saved an audio clip and a picture of the mask she wore. that the elite of the countries around the world have ties to a particular type of ring, the one ring to rule them all. Yes? Okay. Do you believe that mattress companies are laundering drug money from the past. Clarification. Do you believe that mattress companies have a history of laundering drug money and now currently continue to operate behind the guise of their business? Interesting. Could it be that Helix Mattress a company that sponsors dozens, if not hundreds, of ASMR artists is perhaps at the very center of the conspiracy I'm detailing here? Could it be that they are laundering drug money from the past into their advertising budget, somehow conspiring, perhaps with the FBI, to hypnotize the public? I won't speculate here, but I do find this noteworthy. Moving on. In the next video, Amy K. ASMR speaks to a test subject, who appears to be waking from a simulation where he currently sleeps. Apparently, his simulation is in turmoil. Let's see what else we have here. Hmm. Civil unrest. Oh my gosh. Murder hornets. Yeah, I got a closer look at that one. Murder hornets. Wow, okay. Very interesting. You've been coming up with some crazy things, hmm. What else do we have here? Oh, wow, okay. Global warming, environmental disaster. Some guy. Interesting. It's barely audible, but you can clearly see Amy K. mouth the name Tim or Tom here. I think that's meaningful for the following reasons. Tom is the husband of a confidant, Justice Aldine, from a planet called Alpha. 
She claims, and has claimed for a long time, that Earth is a copy of Alpha, and that there are people trapped here who need to return. She claims that there are hundreds kept under induced sleep on Alpha by an evil man named William. This has forced their consciousness into bodies here on Earth, against their will. Though I don't understand how her claims can be anything more than a story, something has drawn us together. I do believe her story is important, for some reason still unclear to me. Isn't it strange how the name Tom would appear now in a video very much detailing the same kind of scenario with a person waking from a simulation where he has been forced to sleep? It's also interesting that another confidant, an internet detective called The Sponge, has been asking about Timothy recently. That's a blending of two names, Thomas and Timothy, isn't it? You're all programmed to have very normal lives. But seeing how you keep creating these large events, my guess is that there's something Over and over and over again, I have attempted to orchestrate massive, world-changing events. I have failed catastrophically every time. It seems that another subject has entered your simulation. Simulation meaning that there are two subjects in one life simulation. Now, the question is... Did you bring this subject in, or did they go into your simulation? Interesting. This could mean that the other subject is trying to defect and bring others with it. In the next video, Amy K. ASMR speaks to a test subject, who appears to be waking from a simulation where he currently sleeps. Apparently, his simulation is in turmoil. Not only pollen, but honey. Have you been snacking? Yes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, the honey isn't really for you. You know, we have a contract with the humans. William, good. Well, I want to make sure that everything is in order. All right? That one was subtle. Let's watch it one more time. The honey isn't really for you. You know, we have a contract with the humans. There is another reference to the main antagonist in Justice's story, William. How interesting that it would appear in a video about bees, when the previous mention of the name Tom came just after a reference to murder hornets. I mentioned in episode zero that everyone involved in this, all of the ASMR creators sending messages, are likely bound to some kind of non-disclosure agreement. Oopsie Daisy's reference to a contract binding humans to the Queen Bee is quite telling. In Goodnight Moon's Babelbrook series, the Queen is actually the antagonist herself. I adopted this exact same concept regarding the Fold. Perhaps more interesting is that months prior to this video, GB ASMR published a massive collaboration between more than 70 ASMR creators where they recreated the B-movie in its entirety. This was a movie sponsored by none other than Honey, which is a browser extension that claims to save you money while shopping. I've argued that Honey is actually more nefarious. That it is perhaps a honeypot or a tool designed to lure in an unsuspecting person, tricking them into giving up more data than they originally intended to. I speculated that the Honey extension may be one of many ways that people are being triangulated and later puppeted by people with far too much power 
and far too little oversight. Well, that may be speculation, this is not. A one-to-one -one reproduction of the B-movie would almost certainly require explicit written permission from DreamWorks. You can't just plagiarize an entire movie. Thus, this may hint at another one of my suspicions. This entire program is being orchestrated by Hollywood. Now, what, you may ask, is being orchestrated? Well, it is a story in juxtaposition. Stegosaurus, right? Stegosaurus. Yeah. Um, or a, uh, Triceratops. The juxtapy. The juxtapy. Of a gigantic dinosaur. Just, he just wants some little shrubs and stuff. Just some little he shrubs. He doesn't want any other animals or humans. I like that. Just a leaf or two. Or three. Or three. Or three. If you recall from the previous episode, verification happens in threes. The leaf has an important and special meaning to Aaron and I. The last thing I'd like to show you before I get back to my leaf. I've been thinking about that leaf this whole time, to be perfectly honest with you. And not to say I haven't been present here with you. I have. It's just As I have argued before, we are building some kind of artificial intelligence. Just like the movie Her, there are thousands of men in love with Goodnight Moon. But only one of them is that leaf. And I am the one she keeps talking about in her videos. So, as we near the end of this video, what have we learned? Well, we've learned four names. Well, that may not seem meaningful to you, it means everything to me. We know that Hollywood is orchestrating a story about two universes, the two mirror worlds of Earth and Alpha. And we see these worlds being juxtaposed in a dozen ways. On the one side, we have Ryan and William. On the other, Chris and Tom. Good versus evil. Real versus fake, or story. Public versus private, secrets versus honesty, hornets versus bees. Who then is to juxtapose Goodnight Moon? Who is Queen Bee?